problems with live steam injectors. This one is part two. The injector plumbing to the boiler check valve can often cause problems. On some occasions it is the boiler check valve that's causing the problem. More about this shortly. I replaced the water valve on this 2 inch scale Fowler traction engine and it still didn't inject so I changed the injector and guess what it still didn't inject. I'm quite certain that the reason for this not injecting was the check valve on the boiler and as there were so many other jobs to put right on this engine the owner said he wasn't bothered about having the injector working anyway because the crankshaft driven pump filled the boiler perfectly. This is a clip when I first got the engine. It was the first steaming outside the workshop and as you can see it's not injecting properly. My first thought was to change the injector for a new one. One of the first jobs I did on this engine was to fix the linkage to the water tap. As you can see here it was all over the place. The water valve at this time was just an ordinary old gas tap and maybe it was leaking. Either way the injector would not work. The first thing that I did was to contact David English at Jubilee Fittings and buy a new injector. And the one I bought was identical to the one that I removed, which was also a Jubilee Fittings injector. But this was all to no avail, the injector still wouldn't inject whether it was the new one or the old one, so it was time to have a look at the check valve. There are two check valves on this engine, one down by the injector and then this one into the boiler and the reason for the one down by the injector was this one was blowing badly. What I'm doing here is first of all removing the top cap then I'm going to take the ball out and have a look at the seat. Basically there are three potential areas of problems where injectors are concerned. One is the water feed, two is the piping and the check valve into the boiler and three would be the injector itself but by changing the injector that is ruled out of the equation. Once I'd removed the top cap, I could see the ball inside the valve. At this stage I was beginning to get quite nervous, just in case I dropped the ball in the check valve onto the gravel path. Unlike most check valves that I use, which are the Jubilee fittings type, with this one I was surprised not to find a ball lift limiter. If the ball in the check valve, when it's forced off its seat, jumps up too high, it can actually block the hole into the boiler, if you see what I mean. Most ball valves have something just to stop the ball from coming too far off the seat. Usually this is machined as part of the cap, but not so in this case. Here I'm using an allen key to push the ball out of the valve. And no, I didn't drop it on the path. I needed to remove this check valve for closer inspection, which meant I had to take off the motion guard. This traction engine has a copper boiler and all of the studs into the boiler are phosphor bronze. It's very well made. Here's the check valve on the bench after I soaked it in cellulose thinners which didn't really remove much of the paint. What I'm doing here is being a human milling machine. By carefully rotating an end mill, not a slot drill, an end mill with four cutters, I cleaned up the seat. There's quite a lot more about what I did to this check valve in the series, a large model showman's engine. These are excerpts from part 54. One reason that initially I was confident was the cause of the problem was that the hole in the check valve was not in the centre. With the help of a diamond grinder in my Proxon motor tool, now it is in the centre. What I never showed in the original video was the fact that the hole through the centre of the shut-off valve doesn't line up with the waterway perfectly. In the first episode of this short series I was redoing the water valve. Subsequent footage in this episode is before I did that. When I filmed this sequence I'd removed the ball from the boiler check valve but obviously there's still one in this egg-shaped valve at the bottom. It's actually trying to inject at the moment. I ran the water to cool the injector then I opened the steam valve and it really was trying, and for a short while it dried up and did inject into the boiler, but not for long. I repeated the process, and once again it really is trying. It's dribbling a bit, but it's not making the noise I want to hear. A live steam injector relies on the manipulation of a column of water, and I've found that if the column of water goes around too many sharp corners, 
you get problems. And any air leaks from the water inlet are catastrophic, it just won't work. I've slowed down this video clip and you can actually see the check valve jumping about. So there's water going in there which is moving it. In a very similar manner to bad plumbing in a house when the pipes knock. I'm going to remove the check valve from the boiler and line up the valve and see if that makes a difference. But that's it for now, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.